All right, game wrapped up like 10 minutes ago. Huskies get the win, 27-20 to 20 at home. And I'm happy, man. That was a good game. I think we played really well. I'm happy with almost everything we did. <clears throat> kind of weird to say that, given that we only won by seven, and we had to get a couple first downs on the last drive of the game to run out the clock. Like, it was not... It was not, you know, a overwhelming victory by any stretch of the imaginations. We didn't come close to covering the giant spread that this game had. Um, but I'm happy. That was a good game. That was a good effort by the boys out there. Um, I don't have too many complaints. <clears throat> I mean, when you think about it, this game started with the worst trick play I've ever seen. We do the backwards pass to Baselli, and he tries to throw it down the field. And I have never seen... Never have I ever seen a defensive back less fooled by a trick play than I did on that play. Uh, Arizona State picks it off. They get the short field. They go down for the running touchdown with a Benjamin. And right away, we're in a 7 nothing hole. So when you consider the fact that the game started out that stupidly, and then we were able to just basically control the whole rest of the game, this was a good win. And... The, the highlight has to be this defensive secondary, which is year in and year out, we lose players. We've lost Buda Baker, Kevin King. Uh, a few years ago, we lost Marcus Peters. <clears throat> I'm forgetting, guys. We've had so many NFL caliber defensive backs roll through Washington, go to the NFL in the first two rounds of the draft, and then play well in the NFL. But this... This group continues to produce. I mean, we didn't have that much pass rush tonight. We didn't have some dominant pass rush out there. You know, we, we weren't harassing Manny Wilkins very much at all. In fact, I think we might have sacked him once the whole game. And yet, still, he can't make plays down the field. He's held to 100 yards passing on the day, 104, which is crazy given that Arizona State is mostly a passing team with a couple of well, at least one superstar wide receiver who did basically nothing in this game. I mean, <clears throat> this secondary is loaded with NFLers, and that's crazy when you look at all the guys we lost last year. Oh, Sidney Jones. Sidney Jones. That was the other guy we lost from last year. I can't believe how good these guys play. I really can't. <clears throat> so, huge ups to them. And we needed it because, uh, to my surprise, we did not have a lot of success against the run against Arizona State. I mean, Eno Benjamin had a good game tonight, rushing for four yards a carry. Not great, but solid. Traylon Smith had a good game. And they actually had much more success running the ball than they did passing on us. Not that they ran all over us or anything, but I was surprised to see them run the ball as much as they did and run the ball as successfully as they did. So... I don't know how to totally feel about that. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the run defense because we're going to be playing teams with better running attacks than Arizona State. And if we go into those games and we just give up 300 rushing yards, I don't see how we can win. <clears throat> so that's the one part that I'm like, okay, I don't know. But they didn't get dominated. They didn't get crushed on the ground or anything like that. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it a little easy. Offense. Obviously, I already went over the trick play, which was, I mean, like I said, I have never seen a defensive back be less fooled on a trick play. We had nothing. <clears throat> we had nothing. And Baselli can't make that throw, obviously, but there it is. After that, I mean, we ran the ball pretty effectively. Gaskin, decent game. Ahmed, great game. Um, it was a nice little two-headed rushing attack there. Pretty happy with everything I saw there. No big runs, but you're not going to get those every week. And meanwhile, Jake Browning, I've been hard on him for the first three games because I think he's just been okay. But tonight I saw a leader. Tonight I saw a guy play at a really, really high level. The touchdown to Ty Jones was great on both sides. Ty Jones, amazing catch in the end zone. <clears throat> the throw to uh, Cade in the back of the end zone, the third touchdown pass. I don't know if I've ever seen Browning make a better throw than that. I mean, he fit it into a tight window where, honestly, looking at the play, I'm like, I don't want him to throw that. I would have said, I don't want him to make that pass. Just throw the ball away and kick the field goal. But he made the perfect throw, 
and he put it where only his receiver could get it, and the receiver went to go get it. So, huge props to Jake Browning, because the offensive line did not play a great game today, I don't think. The pass rush was on him quite a few times in that game. I was not like, oh, he's got all day back there, that's why he's playing so good. No, he was just finding open guys. He made a couple of questionable throws, he made a couple passes that could have been picked off, that could have been really costly in this game, but... I'm coming away from this one feeling really good about the quarterback, which I have not felt about our quarterback in, like, over a year. Maybe about a year. So, credit to them. Um, I already said Ty Jones, great catch in the back of the end zone. Aaron Fuller continues to have a big season. Baselia, one catch, but that catch was... <clears throat> I mean, that that's how you win games. Those are the kinds of plays that win games. Uh, incredible catch, incredible concentration to get his foot in bounds. I'm, uh, I'm happy. So, good team win. We overcame the 7-0 hole that we found a stupid way to put ourselves in. Um, you know, that, that could have, you know, opened the floodgates to an ugly game that ended in a bad loss that ends the season, but we forced a lot of fumbles on uh, defense, too. BBK had, I think, 21 tackles in this game or something. We didn't get the fumble luck. There were a couple plays where we just didn't fall on the fumble, but uh, we're still hitting hard on defense. We're trying to take the ball away. We dropped a couple of picks, so um, there was opportunity to do even more damage than we did, but you got to feel pretty good about what we did out there at the end of the day. So... That's this game. We're three and one. The conference schedule it's it's getting warmed up, and um, you know today I watched that uh, Stanford Oregon game. Obviously, I couldn't watch the end when it got really interesting, but I know what happened. And this Washington team is going to have a few chances to prove themselves, but they're also going to have a few chances to lose. So <clears throat> I saw Oregon. You know they were up thirty-one to seven. Game was over in the fourth quarter. And then they get the touchdown overturned, and then they fumble it, and then Stanford scores, and then they fumble it again, and then Stanford scores. And, you know, I came out of that game after watching the highlights, watching the start of that game. It's like, I don't come away from that game thinking that Oregon is bad. I think Oregon is really, really unlucky. They made some really stupid mistakes and got some really bad luck to lose that game. And obviously, Stanford is Stanford. They're ranked number seven in the conference, I think. So. Those two games that we have in Oregon and hosting Stanford are opportunities for us to prove ourselves that I didn't know we were going to have because both those teams, to my eye, look really good. Oregon should have blown out Stanford tonight, but they completely screwed that up, but that doesn't make them a bad team. So we're going into Oregon later this season, and I'll tell you right now, that's going to be a really, really tough game against what I see to be a really, really good team. And if we can find a way to win that game, if we can find a way to beat Stanford, and even Wazoo, who lost a really tough game last last night, um, I think we're starting to prove something. I think this conference is going to give us a chance to go 12-1 and and be deserving of a playoff spot, which I did not believe until really today. So I'm not saying we can do it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Stanford, those guys are good. Oregon's going to be good. We could easily drop any of those three games, the Apple Cup, throwing the Apple Cup in there as well. But uh, the important part is we have a chance to impress some people. We're not necessarily going to impress anybody with a game like tonight where we win by one touchdown and we need to run out the clock at the end. But the opportunities are coming. So if the team can get it together and play really good in those big games, I think we can get in. I think it might come down to that Stanford game. And we got that at home. So... We have a chance, and that's exciting because I didn't know if we had that I had a chance until tonight. Um, short term, everybody in the top 10 won today. I don't think anybody's going to fall beneath us. If anything, we might fall to 11 or 12 because we didn't overwhelm anybody. I mean, Stanford is the obvious candidate to maybe drop, but they're not going to drop below us. So that's that. Uh, if you guys happen to be watching this right after I'm uh, recording, right after I upload it, I'm going to be going live on Twitch tonight at some point for a little bit of World of Final Fantasy. Uh, I'm not doing anything too interesting, but if you want to talk to me, you can. So, um, if you happen to be watching this right after I upload it, I'll be on uh, PlayStation, World of Final Fantasy. Come talk to me on Twitch. Link below. 
See you guys tomorrow after the Seahawks game.